في الجنرال يا يا ان شاء الله اه جود ميل جود مورنينج جود ايفنينج جود افترنون فيوز اوف افريكا جود افتر افريكا تي في وي هاف ا فيري سبيشال جيست فور يو توداي ناو وي غونا توك اباوت ذا كيرنت سيتويشن نوت كورونا بت بيتا as we have seen the story progresses we've seen the chinese expats african communities under pressure now i have a guest for you from china who's going to shed some light in well the the the, the guy he's going to uh, present himself but he's not a direct victim but he will tell us what what life's looked like for blacks africans in china and what's going on right now briefly please Dave. okay uh Thank you, uh, Abu, first. And uh, uh, second, uh, I would like to say uh, I wish uh, everybody uh, who's seeing this, who's affected by COVID-19, will uh, have a better outlook on life and can appreciate uh, all the little things that we are getting right now and to just stay positive. And uh, right now, uh, on top of this uh, horrible uh, situation, some of the african communities uh, specifically uh, around guadong province and mm -hmm. uh, in the guangzhou city uh, our people are uh, going through a very tough time mm -hmm. uh, most of it is just a blunt racism mm -hmm. and uh, this is this is like uh, it's not even a hidden kind of racism it's straight out it's <laughs> written it's like uh, uh, colonial times uh -huh. and uh, we are seeing racism at a very very alarming kind of way and uh, we are seeing uh, posters uh, uh, that are raising eyebrows yeah. like everywhere yeah we've seen that we've seen that uh, a lot so but uh, i gotta ask you this what what causes this blame shifting at the first time like what is what gives them the motivation or or, or what triggers them to blame everything on an, on current african experts and dualists like you yeah well uh, from uh, uh, the media posts that i have read uh, mm -hmm. they are only basing this just on uh, uh, there were uh, uh, foreigners that were uh, tested that has that have uh, tested positive for COVID-19, right. and uh, yeah. from the foreigners that uh, tested uh, positive, mm -hmm. uh, there were around 14 or 15 uh, black uh, mm -hmm. uh, persons that tested positive, and uh, in their assumptions that uh, they are just thinking that all blacks. Uh, live together or uh, at some point in, in the city they will spend some time together mm -hmm. but uh, that's not uh, the case and it's actually a very uh, sad excuse mm -hmm. yeah right um, but they are basing it on this they are just saying that there were a couple of foreigners that were tested positive and uh, some of them were black uh, mm -hmm. and that's not uh, including that's not excluding just uh, the Africans, uh, it's also including blacks from all over, uh, from all over, uh, including oh, wow. America, right. and uh, also some uh, UK, and, uh, uh, but there are so also black people coming from Africa too that tested positive, and uh, that was the case for uh, this uh, thing. Yeah, right, right. So we've seen all the media backlash from the black communities and from all over the world. Which, which is a very good thing. So uh, personally, you're from Ethiopia and do you imply the same thing to your embassy? Did you, did you receive any kind of comfort or what's going on with you personally too? Well, personally, uh, around our province uh, or even in my city, uh, we have not been exposed to uh, those kind of uh, racism. Uh, the people here are more more or less uh, very humble yeah. and uh, they are not exposed to the foreign culture and they just want to get a little taste of that uh, culture right. uh, but uh, when you come to the uh, foreign di diplomats uh, that should take care of their people at this time 
uh, I only saw the Nigerians, uh, the diplomats uh, missions uh, where, while confronting the Chinese mm -hmm. uh, authorities. Yeah. Uh, but from our side, uh, we also have uh, consulate general that's uh, situated in Guangzhou. Yeah. And there are also a couple of Ethiopians that were in the midst of this situation, but they mm -hmm. did not get, uh, as far as I know, they did not get any sort of uh, comforting yeah. uh, things. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, that's, that's it. it is essential that our consuls and embassies all over China right now to get notice of this fact and give comfort and moral support for everyone down there. So uh, what's the current situation right now for those African under the bridges and sleeping on the street and everywhere? Is there anything changed? Have you heard anything right now within these two well, days? I was uh, looking at some social media posts on Instagram. There is this page I follow, and uh, I saw that some of them have been picked up and they have been placed at some quarantine hotels. Mm. Uh, but there are also uh, a number of um, foreigners still outside uh, living on those exact situations, on those exact uh, conditions. Mm. Mm, but we are also seeing some. Uh, nice local people that are trying to help uh, oh. by providing meal and also providing uh, blankets. Mm -hmm. I saw a Chinese, uh, a Chinese lady handing out uh, blankets and yeah. I also saw some other uh, fighting, some other uh, Chinese uh, lady that was fighting for the right of the, some black man that was being evicted from his apartment. So. I think that there's also something positive there, but I think uh, if we talk in the numbers, I think most of them are still outside, living in inhumane ways. Yeah, right. Right. This. right. How is the China government or the local governments are responding in the midst of all of this? Well, uh, I, uh, I read an article that was uh, produced by CGTN and uh, uh, it was shocking uh, to say the least because mm. they did not admit it and uh, what they said is that uh, they think that this kind of things happen because uh, most of the immigrants, especially the African immigrants are there uh, in illegal visas. They are there illegally, living illegally. In how, much, how much is that true, by the way? Do you have mm -hmm. any? I don't have uh, uh, facts, but I think, yeah, uh, there are some that are living uh, without uh, the legal uh, papers. Yeah. But even if that is the case, uh, it's not uh, the correct way to handle these kind of situations. Because right, right. Even if, even if they are uh, living illegally, I don't think. Uh, they should evict them onto the streets right. uh, and uh, be uh, situated in this kind of conditions because it's inhuman and I don't think you, could, you should do that to anybody so, regardless of what they have done. Yeah, let me take you back to my question. So the Chinese uh, government and local government, did they apologize, acknowledge it or are they just playing along with it? Uh, they are just saying that uh, these uh, things may have happened, but they are not sure. And uh, they are just saying that uh, they are only getting, uh, uh, trying to crack down on illegal uh, immigrants, illegal, uh, illegal occupants of uh, apartments and uh, well, whatnot. But uh, they, they, most of uh, the a response was aimed at just trying to uh, give the uh, social media uh, posts just uh, silent, you know. Silence, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, and uh, I was looking at Moscow Times reports uh, yesterday and it says that now majority of the Chinese second wave of corona outbreak actually was imported from Russia. 
Oh. Yesterday, yeah. So would you, would you, in your mind, think that we're going to see the same treatment of Russians as the African dwellers over there? Oh, that's highly unlikely. I mean, uh, based on my experience here, uh, most of the Chinese people I, I've seen like uh, admire uh, white people. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and uh, when, it com- when it comes to racism, I think uh, it is real somewhat. Yeah. And uh, I don't think it will uh, happen to Russians in this particular case. Um, but I guess <laughs> time will tell. Time will tell, definitely time will tell. So thank you very much, Dawit. We appreciate your feedback and stay safe down there. Okay, you too. Thank you, Mike. All right, you're welcome. Okay.